we're going to build this one out. Yes. Um, so I don't even know what. <laughs> hey, welcome to Gabe's Cave. I'm Darren. I'm Brandon, and much like a blind man, we're going to fill this one out. Indeed. Uh, but first, we're going to jump right into our, thanking our sponsor. That's RPG, RPGHiring.com. Make sure you check them out. If you uh, need a new career, they're building people, changing lives. RPGHiring.com. And today, we don't have a lot for you, but we do have a really cool interview with John Swayze that we're going to go uh, get to here in just a minute. Uh, this was done a little while back at Caltown. Uh, we've got a lot of interviews stacked. We've got some things to give away. We just haven't had a whole lot of time to do said interviews um, with other episodes and, and, and shows coming out and stuff that we needed to uh, do reviews on we feel like was more important. Uh, than some interviews here and there. Uh, but I believe our plan for the future is to do, because uh, we're going to keep doing interviews at shows and with friends and with artists and whatnot. I think what our plan is to do, like uh, have like a separate Wednesday show uh, specifically for interviews. So like the main show and then like on Saturdays and then just have like a, an interview show for those that want a little extra, uh, maybe on Wednesdays or something. We still have to figure that out, uh, uh, editing and, and Chris's time and all that. So uh, that, that may be something for the future because we do have a bunch of stuff stacked that are, are good interviews and some of them are not. Some of them are, are really goofy interviews like one I did with Candace recently at SpaCon. But it would be funny to watch uh, all 10 minutes of it, the cancer that it was. Um, uh, but other than that, we'll talk a little bit about John Swayze. Uh, John Swayze is an actor, a voice actor, a producer, and a director. Um, you may not have heard of his name, but I promise you you've heard his voice if you've watched any kind of anime or uh, have you played any games or have you seen any uh, any kind of cartoonish stuff? He's got a very strong voice, and it's um, uh, someone that is a, a, a... I don't really know what role you would say. He's always like the father-like figure on animes. Uh, this is going to be a, a, definitely an episode for anime. He's done 449, at least that's what, is what we know of, 449 roles, mostly anime. Uh, some of the, the the shows that he's done are uh, Attack on Titan, Evangelion, My Hero, uh, several different My Heroes, uh, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Xenoverse, Dragon Ball Game, um, like all of the One Piece stuff, Full Metal Alchemist, Ghost in the Shell, several of them, Initial D, and he's played in some uh, he's he's voiced in some games as well like Borderlands Two. Um, that was me literally just scrolling through the list trying to find stuff I've recognized, but there was so much stuff in there that I, I I'm cause I, I'm not as big in anime, so I don't know everything. I promise you, if you like anime, you will know who he is. And it's a really interesting interview and he's really engaging and kind of tells you his story. So definitely this is a great watch. Absolutely. So we'll get right into that. Um, hope you enjoy. Hey, welcome back. Cable Maniacs is uncle nasty. We're here at Calton part two. This is the third interview that I've done while we've been here. Uh, this is going to be something a little different, but we've done them before. This gentleman right here is a voice actor. He's probably done some things you guys know. He's probably done some things you guys don't know, but ought to know. This name's John Swayze. That's your yep. name? John Swayze. Yep. No He's, relation to Patrick. None. Nope. Not whatsoever. But you are handsome like him. Well, I'm alive too, so I got that going for me. <laughs> That's a bonus. <laughs> so... Introduce yourself a little bit and talk and talk to the people and tell them just a little bit about yourself. Sure, sure. Well, thanks for having me, number one. Oh, thank you. Uh, my name is John Swayze. I'm a voice actor uh, here in Texas, uh, the most powerful state when it comes to anime in the uh, lower 48 as well as all 50, actually. But anyway, uh, I live in Houston. I work at a uh, place called Sentai Filmworks where I direct uh, as an ADR director. I've been doing voice work for uh, 25 years. I work at Sentai, uh, Funimation up in Dallas, Okratron. Uh, I've done some work for Rooster Teeth in Austin. Uh, some of the characters you might know, uh, currently I play uh, All for One in My Hero Academia. Hey. Um, uh, Lord Death in Soul Eater. 
uh, Crocodile in One Piece. Um, let's see, Hohenheim and Full Metal Alchemist. Uh, there's another voice actor here, uh, Vic Mignogna. He's on the other side of that wall. I play a lot of his fathers, even though he's <laughs> older than me. It's really weird. <laughs> but anyway, um, so I do that, and I've, I've been doing that, this for a long time. You've so. got that voice. Thank you. I, I play a lot of bad guys and a lot of fathers, and a lot of times they're the same people. <laughs> so, and actually, another one I play is uh, no, Daddy. Gendo uh, Ikari from Evangelion, which uh, I'm very excited. Evangelion, just we just did four movies, and they're all about to drop on Amazon. So, hey, yeah, very, very excited about that. So, we got, got a lot, of, a lot of good a date stuff. On that? Well, I'm married, so I don't generally go on dates. But um, I, um, uh, no, I, uh, I don't. It, it's it's going to be sporadically, I think, throughout August. They're going to drop, you know, one a week or something like that. But, you know, lowly voice actors, they don't give us that kind of information. I wish they would, but they don't. He ain't chopped liver, people. So now I've been doing this 25 years, and I was just telling somebody at uh, my table that, you know, 25 years ago, when I started doing this, I didn't even know what anime was. Right. In fact, when, when somebody goes, oh, you ought to do anime, I'm like, well, what is that? And they're like, well, it's Japanese animation. And I'm like, well, I don't speak Japanese, so blah, you know. <laughs> Like, no, we dub it into English. And so I've just started doing it. And I just got in at the right time with a company in Houston called ADV Films. And there just weren't that many people doing it. And so I did a lot of stuff. And, you know, where one actor might be the hero, uh, you know, young trope, uh, anime trope type. I would be like 50 bad guys or 50 other characters. So um, I've just had the, the absolute being in the right place at the right time to uh to start doing this stuff and i've made a career of it and here i am 25 years later so, talking to you so well hey we appreciate you coming over here and talking to us that's for sure 25 years that's a long time in the business was this i what know is the and most... i haven't aged a bit well, i have actually quite maybe a just bit. maybe a little just a tad <laughs> yeah he is handsome thank you yeah, yeah yeah i don't have a beard like that man that's cool that's good looking no, all of my respect and authority is driven right here from the now is that is that always what you do or is that a pandemic beard no, no, this is it. That's it. I That's in, you. I was in the military, so like when I got out of the army and I didn't have to shave anymore, it was straight right, back. right. I've never looked back. Right. Well, good for I've you. Never looked good back. for you, and thank you for your service. Oh, no, you're very welcome. Uh, what is what is your favorite? character that you've worked on so far so that's a that's an interesting question my favorite character is is generally the one i'm doing currently i mean i love doing all for one he's a lot of fun and he's about to open up a can of whoop ass uh here coming up i don't want to give anything away but it's about to get real so do you go back and watch them <laughs> though uh sometimes yeah i i work in anime every day and so when i come home i don't want to relax Watching by watching anime. more anime. Right. You know, I, I want to watch something else or be with my family or whatever. But uh, he's good. But actually, my if I had to really say my favorite character, it's from a movie called The Boy and the Beast, okay. which is a movie directed or created by Momoro Hosada, who did uh, Wolf Children, um, Summer Wars. And he's, he's sort of like the Steven Spielberg of anime. And um, I play the Beast. Okay. And it's, it's a beautiful, beautifully done movie. I was I felt very honored to be a part of it and be able to voice it. But he's sort of he's he's also he's one of these guys, you know, and that's kind of in my wheelhouse. So right. it was it was fun for him to play. But the movie's just so beautiful. Um, you know, I, I just it's really near and dear to my heart. Well, I'll have to check so, that out. Yeah. I like those touching. Yeah. I like the touching yeah. stuff. Um, you, you told me before we sat down that you had some upcoming projects coming up and you had mentioned that. One of them was called The Perfect Con. So, yeah, The Perfect Con, it's K-H-A-N. Right, like King, uh, right? Yeah, like Kublai Khan. Yeah. 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 Um, we got a hold of a movie, an animated movie, some friends of mine and I. And we have done this before where we took an existing product. Uh, in one case, we did a movie. It was called Gamera 2. It was a live-action Japanese monster movie. And um, Gamera is a giant turtle like Godzilla, but this, well, you know, he's this, the guardian of the universe, you know, and he comes in and he defeats the bad monster and all that. But we dubbed the entire movie as a bunch of Texas rednecks. <laughs> and uh, in fact, the movie's called, now we renamed it called Lake Texarkana Gamera. Oh, that's so cool. 
And you can find it on, you can find the trailer on YouTube. If you email me or message me, you can, I'll send you a link to it. It's free. I'll give it to you. But anyway, we're, we did another movie. We got this other movie. It was animated and it's called, I don't even know what it was called originally. It never actually was technically finished, but we got the rights to it and we rewrote the story and it's this jewel heist uh, spy movie. And it's really funny, but it's got a lot of great actors in it. Um, me, Jay Hickman, Vic Mignogna's in it. Uh, uh, Lucy Christian, Jay, um, excuse me, uh, Chris and Greg Ayers. It's just, a, it's a great cast and it's a lot of fun, but we're going to premiere it uh, August the 7th at, I put on an anime show too, mm -hmm. called Anime Houston. Okay. And this is our first year. I put on a show called Anime Dallas, which is in the, like November, December. So it'll be November this year. But this is our first year to do Anime Houston, and we're going to premiere it at Anime Houston August 6th, 7th, and 8th. Okay. So, and then it'll be available on a website. So just perfect con. It'll be great, you know. You told me you had another one coming up. What was that one? So uh, I, this is another one I'm actually very proud of. It's called Vinland Saga. And Vinland Saga is actually already out on Amazon. Okay. Uh, but subtitled only. Okay. And we did the dub for it. Okay, so that'll be coming out soon. That should be coming out very soon, yeah. It's um, it's really, if I can say this, it is badass. It's about Vikings. Okay. And it is really cool. It's not your typical anime, but it is so well animated and drawn, and the voice actors are extraordinary. We got Jason Douglas and David Wald, Mike Himoto, and I, I co-directed it with a really good friend of mine, uh, Kyle Jones, who's my partner in crime on the Lake Texarkana and uh, the uh, Perfect Con as well. And uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. That's going to be a lot of fun, man. So it'll be out soon. And then uh, the other thing that I'm doing right now, and I did not bring a copy of it because I didn't realize we were doing this, but I wrote a children's book. Yeah, yeah. You told me that. Children's and, uh, book. Yeah. That so, and it was actually, it was, it was born out of conventions like this. Okay. Because when we go to conventions. It's a place where you can just be yourself, cosplay, you know, not worry about people like, what is that? You know, it's just come be you. Right. And uh, so. Let your freak flag fly. Exactly. It let your freak flag fly. And I'm also a big deadhead. I love the Grateful Dead. Right. And I, the audiences, even though they may not coincide a lot, mentally they're the same. It's just go be yourself. Hang out. No one's going to call you out for anything. You know, right. just be you. And uh, so anyway, I wrote this book. It's called, the series is called The Jungleberg Children's Reading Community. And uh, the first book is a book called Zeke Gets Glasses. And the premise of the books, there's going to be multiple books. The premise of the books, they deal with things that kids um, ha have to deal with. It to them may seem like an insurmountable mountain of an issue. To adults, we're like, get over it. You right, know, come on. Yeah. But to them, it's a big deal. So, uh, like, the next book is um, about a, a squirrel who's afraid of heights. But it's, it's not about get over your fear, man up. It's not about that at all. It's about it's okay to be afraid of heights. But how are you going to work around it? You know, don't let that. It's okay to have that phobia or that fear or that anxiety. But how are you going to work around it to continue moving forward? Are you afraid life? of heights? No, no. But I love squirrel. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I um, squirrel but, nuggets. But uh, I uh, the anyway, it's going to deal with things like that. So the first book is this book. It's a spider monkey named Zeke, and he keeps swinging into things, and um, he uh, he realizes he needs glasses, but he's afraid to go to the eye doctor. So he goes to the eye doctor, and he overcomes that little challenge, and it turns out great. So, and it's also, you can go to our website, you can download, you can order the book, you can download it, or you can download the audio version. It's acted out by a bunch of voice actors, Lucy Christian, Jay Hickman, uh, Blake Shepard, who is also the illustrator who did an amazing job on the artwork. It's all hand painted and it's just gorgeous. So it's something that I'm very, very proud of. Well, that's cool. That's cool. So many, many accomplishments. Um, do you have any like weird or or strange talents or abilities that you'd like to share with these people here? 
weird or strange talents. Yeah, but I mean, I, you know, the voice acting thing—that's that's a talent in its own. But do you have any hidden, hidden from the people? <laughs> well, if I did it, it would no longer be hidden. That's what we want. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't. I'm sorry. I, I don't. I I put all my stuff out on the table. I'm I'm an open book. So. Open nothing book. nothing hidden no hidden strange no hidden strengths no hidden i i um i love crawfish ipas and uh sausage and fried chicken and clearly that shows so <laughs> he loves sausage yeah any anime fans out here yeah i've got a few okay almost can everybody so can we ask them a question if they have a question yeah would yeah. you would you guys like to ask the gentleman a question yeah oliver what is it Say that again, buddy. He said, what's it like to be there with everyone else there doing like on set with everybody else doing the voices? So um, when we do the voices, the way that it works is you walk into a booth and there's an engineer and an, a director and then you're in a booth. And those are the only three people in the room. So we don't work with the other actors while we're recording. We record one actor at a time. So we rarely see each other as actors. We might see each other passing in a, in a you know, because both Funimation and Sentai have multiple studios and, you know, so you might see each other in the hallway. But oddly enough, really where we see each other mostly um, is either socially, if we live in the same city, or at these conventions. Right. You know, so right. we, we'll, we'll hang out and pal around together at the shows. But um, we really don't, we don't work together um, in the, uh, I'm sorry, my butt is quacking. <laughs> Quack. Did that answer your question? Do you have another one? Are you sure? You had that one quick, though. You were like, I'm ready to ask this question. You sure you don't have another question? Did you have one over here? Yeah. Hold on, wait, let me, let me, what, what she asked, because they can't hear her. Oh, okay. Okay, so what, what she asked was, because if, since you can't interact with the people, how difficult is it to, to do it since you can't be with them and see how they're doing and everything? Right. So that's a great question. So one thing she did say, though, is you can't get physical. Right. You actually do get physical. In fact, as an actor, I tell people, like, if the microphone is here, and I, let's pretend I'm standing, from here down, I can move whatever I want. I just don't want to move my head like this or, you know, like that. But you definitely want to get physical. If you're running, you want to, you know... You can't just do all of your lines like this. So you want to let yourself be physical. Um, there's, there's different methods because if you're the first actor in, nobody has recorded, so you have nothing to go off of. When you're the last actor, you're listening to everybody else and you can really react. So that's where as a director, it comes in. It's, that's my job is to, you know, Hey, that line was great. You delivered it well, but let me let me give you the context of what this is, and it may change the way you read it. So um, that's something we have to keep tabs on because we don't want it to just be random lines all recorded, you know. Um, but yeah, the more people that have come in, the better. The other thing too is, uh, you know, people ask me a lot, like, how do I get a voice? How do I arrive at a voice? And um, one thing to remember is, is the Japanese have already created this character, you know. Um, I'm not creating it. What my job is, is to, I'm going to dub it into English, and I want to give it its own personality and certainly give it my take and my spin. But first thing I have to do is listen to what the Japanese actor did and stay as true to that performance as I can. You know what I mean? Right. So, as a perfect example... There's a show I did called Soul Leader. Anybody ever heard of Soul Leader? Okay. I play Lord Death. Now, when I was uh, doing Lord Death, I was doing Crocodile from One Piece and Gosaburo from My Bride's a Mermaid and a couple others. And everything I did was like this. So when I, I didn't know anything about the show uh, uh, Soul Leader, and I heard about it, I was like, hey, they want you to audition. I was like, great. And I walked in, and the character's name is Lord Death. Well, I'm thinking, this is Lord Death, you know. Mm -hmm. And I started to do it, and, and the director's like, no, 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 no. Listen to what the Japanese does. It's like, oh. Oh, he's a little more like this. 
It's more like this voice, not down here. It's up here. So that was a real good lesson for me just as an actor to like really listen to what the Japanese actor does. I'm not mimicking what they do, but I want to, I want to capture the essence of what they're doing. If you, that makes sense. It does. It does. So, um, as a matter of fact, when we were, I got the part obviously. And as we were recording, uh, 20 minutes into the first session, uh, Zach, the director said, Hey, stop. Um, where you've evolved with the voice in these 20 minutes is perfect. So let's start over now that you're in the zone. You know what I mean? So uh, that's just kind of the process of how we find that voice. That's awesome. Yeah. What, Great question. Any, go ahead. Hey, uh, the gentleman just asked, he said, has there ever been a time where you, you've recorded something, but you have to go back and re-record because of a line that another actor did? Right. Yes, absolutely. Um, especially as a director. When I bring in actors and somebody will deliver a line, and hopefully I catch this ahead of time. Sometimes it slips through, but I'll go, oh, man, that the way you delivered your line, let's say you're recording now and, and she recorded yesterday, it would be like, oh, my gosh, yours is perfect, but her response doesn't match. That's not how you would respond. So I'll we'll mark it, put a marker up, and we'll... If she's coming back in, we'll just do a pickup or sometimes we have to say, hey, can you come back in and do a pickup, you know? But yeah, that's very important. We And as a director, that's probably one of the hardest things to make sure you get a hold of is is not letting that those lines slip through. So that's why it's important for us as directors to know the show, know the script, you know, know what's going on, know the context and all that kind of stuff so we can, you know, because there could be a line you deliver and and you, you just deliver it like they went that way. Right. You know, but what you don't know is there's a line two pages before or five lines up or whatever that referred to that. And so you have to deliver it a different way because it, it's a callback to referring to that previous line. Does that make sense? Yeah. So The emotion's already there. Yeah. You got another one? Anybody else have a question? A favorite father that you play. Do you have a favorite? Uh, you know, all the fathers are like bad people. So I'm like, gosh, you know, they're all good. I mean, they're all fun. I, I mean, again, it would go back. Kumatetsu is a father figure in The Boy and the Beast. And so he would probably be my favorite. Boy and the Beast, again, it's this animated movie by Momoro Hosada, and it's sort of like Karate Kid meets Jungle Book. And uh, it's just a fantastic movie, you know, uh, takes place in another dimension and a parallel universe, if you will. And um, But he would be my favorite, you know, just rough around the edges and but really loves the boy that he's bringing up. That's a know. good question. Yeah, That's not a that is a good, That's question. a good question. You look well, like you want to ask a question. Like, every time I look over there, you're like, I've got one, but I'm not going to say it. Do you have a question? I actually do have one. Okay. I'm an animated person myself. Like, I'm very lively and everything. If I wanted to try to get into voice acting, mm -hmm. how, how do you even go about that? Like, Well, if you want to get into voice acting, the, the very first thing, the most important thing that you can do is learn to act. Um, it's I was not a thespian. It's not about doing voices. It's not about, you know, I, I had a guy come by my table and he said he was in, interested in voice acting. I said, oh, that's cool. He goes, I can do voices. And he started doing like, I think it was Kermit the Frog. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, that's great. But, you know, they already have somebody to do that. So it's not about I can do a Homer Simpson or I can do Bugs Bunny or I can do, you know, Bob's Burgers or whatever. They've already got people that can do that. And so really what, as an actor, what you want to do is the, the most unique and powerful weapon you have as a voice actor is your voice. And I, that may sound obvious, but what I mean by that is your voice. Nobody has a voice just like yours. So it's akin to going, I want to learn how to play the guitar. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to find a vintage 1963 Stratocaster that was played by Jimi Hendrix. 
and spend $30,000 on it. And I'm going to get a Marshall stack. And I'm going to get an array of foot pedals. And I'm going to be ready to rock. But it still doesn't mean you know how to play the guitar. You know what I mean? Right, right. So I get I get voice actor, you know, wannabes. I said, not wannabes, but people that want to get into it. They're like, so what kind of equipment do I need? I'm like, dude, you don't need to be buying equipment right now. You need to work on your craft as an actor. That's the very first thing. So anybody that wants to get into voice acting, I would say find an acting class. There's plenty of them. You can do them online. You can do them in person. Uh, in the Dallas Metroplex, Fort Worth Metroplex area, there's plenty of classes up here. Um, you can go down to Houston, Austin, San Antonio, anywhere. Um, you can find classes. Take those classes and then take them again and then take them again. And once you start to develop this uh, this uh, acumen or, or this, not acumen, but just this, you start to understand when you pick up a script what it means when you look at it. Because a script, really, for an actor... Is like a sheet of music for a musician. You look at it and you read it and you go, okay, well, I know where this needs to go and what's going on. I get it. And then you can, you bring out your emotions. You know, that's what it's about. So um, if you can do that, uh, you're golden. And then the voice part, you can take some voice classes. Uh, you know, I, I teach them. Um, you can have a video online you can buy for like 25 bucks if you go to my website. Um, John Swayze dot actor. And it's, it's basically just tells you everything you need to know. But what, what I can't do is like, if you came and did a voice class with me, what I would tell you is, uh, it's like learning to play the guitar. I will show you how to make some chords. I will show you how to do some scales, but unless you practice on your own, you will never get any good. No matter how many times you come to see me, because it's the muscle memory that you have to get. And only you can do that. So that's good advice. The, oh, that's the, good advice. The main thing is, is take an acting class, take it again. Not only that, but then you'll start to uh, get yourself ensconced in the acting community. You'll start to make contacts, make friends, make connections and that kind of thing. So start with the acting. Sir, I appreciate you. Hey man, thank you, brother. This, man. Really enjoyed it. it. Awesome. Thanks a lot. I hey, appreciate all you guys. Yeah, Gabe's cave. Has a big hand. Check him out. All of we hope you enjoyed that interview with John Swayze. John, thank you for doing the interview with us. We really enjoyed meeting you. It was a, a good interview and, and good talking with you uh, that day. Absolutely wonderful. As you can tell, we have switched timelines again because we recorded this before the store opening and now we are editing it again. And we had to re-film some card stuff as why I'm here with a hoodie on and Gabe's here and not Brandon. But nonetheless, Magic of this is Gabe's cave. Gabe needed to be on this episode of his own channel. <laughs> anyway, anyways, uh, I believe we should go on to everybody's favorite part of the show where we give stuff away. And now we're about to give away J Man Chan's cards right here. We're about to run a winner's video. Aren't we, Gabe? Run it. Congratulations to the winners, all five in the loot box. 
I do have Jay's cards right here in my hands, but guess what? As you're watching this, Allison's actually about to go pack these up right here, right now. There they go. Mm, they're they're gone. now going to go to you, the winners. We hope you enjoy them. Congratulations again in the loot box winner. You're dead last, but we know we know you deserve that loot box. You're all very lucky. And it is fantastic. We always make sure of it. Allison does, actually. She's the one that does it all. So now we're on to this week's Artist Spotlight. That is James Dixon. We have five of his cards left. We are giving away all five, and these are some awesome cards. They really are. I'm surprised these didn't get picked in the first place. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna steal that one right there. Four As Gabe now. uncenters the cards after we've spent five minutes on centering them up, they're back, back correctly. I, I really like these. I like these. I like his. Uh, I like his. Um, his Ghost Rider. I want to say he did a Ghost Rider. He's done a Ghost Rider before. I don't yes. remember. I think so. I don't remember. We've we've dealt with a lot of cards since yes. Series One. And I like his uh, Shazam. I'm not going to call him Captain. I guess he's Captain Marvel. He is. He, he's I like, the real I like Captain where he Marvel. jumps off and he's like, Shazam! Yeah, really cool. Uh, my two favorites are Mark I from you know Iron Man and then, of course, the King in Black. That's cool. No. Everybody loves Punisher, but I've never seen it. Me neither. Um, but I don't know him as the Punisher. I know him as... Um, what's his name from... Um, Ford versus Ferrari. Someone will someone will correct me here on the. the he was in that, wasn't he? Uh, he's a very good actor on that movie. I, I was, yeah, awesome. Oh, uh, we were gonna meet him at a con, and, and everybody's gonna be like getting Punisher stuff, and I was gonna have my big in my my <laughs> bedroom the Ford versus Ferrari poster. I was gonna have it rolled up and bring it to him, have him sign it. Yeah, that was the goal, but you know, that all got canceled. Mm. Anyways, these are the cards this week. We're giving away all five, and if you don't know how to win one of these cards, all you got to do is click the link in the description below. Fill that out. Make sure you like, subscribe, and leave a comment. It's that simple. You win free art. This is original artwork from James Dixon. One of one cards. One of one. We'll have him down in the description below. So you can check him out. Make sure you hit him up if you're looking for anything, um, any commissions or any of his prints. I'm sure he has uh, stuff you can grab from him. Uh, super awesome guy. We've done an interview with him. If you haven't seen that, we'll try to link that here. I'm not the best at that, but, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out one of these days. Have we found any on eBay yet? I don't know if we have or not. I know Chris Reed was checking that. Nasty. Yeah. But. but anyways, uh, Gabe, did you have anything else to say to the people, the beautiful people out there? No. <laughs> no. If you're going to do a bottle kick <clears throat> challenge where you do like a spinning kick. To uh, like make sure unscrew that, the cap. Yeah, to unscrew the cap. Make sure you're not in an aisle full of other bottles. Or make sure that you know what you're doing. Don't hurt yourself, people. And Especially we'll see you. Don't hurt your wallet by doing it. Yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>